It's working with blocks, gets, and ranges, and then I'll give you a slight taste of regular expressions, and then we'll be done. Uh, bear in mind that this is going to be like effectively an hour and a half long lecture, so continuing. We're going to make a new, uh, new file, we'll call this ex6.rb, and then this one we're going to be dealing with arrays, so arrays. Our favorite things, right? Um, now, Ruby, since it is dynamically typed, is pretty uh, loose on what can be inside of an array. For example, an array can be composed of cat, a, uh, numbers, strings, a floating point, uh, pretty much just anything you want in there. This does have uh, 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 issues, though. If we want to uh, do things like sorting on the array, they kind of need to be um, comparable items, and a string and a number are not comparable items. So just bear that in mind when you go ahead and do this. So if you want to print out A, right, we print out A0, right, we index it just like in, in Java or C. Uh, we use zero-based indexes. So if you run this, uh, we should see the first thing that prints out will be 1, right? Oh, hello, I need to save. So we go ahead and, and run that one more time, and we see that we get 1 as expected. All right, so uh, now if, if we want to do assignment to the array, we can just uh, uh, put in uh, the item in that we want to assign to, um, in parentheses, the index, and we put whatever the value is. So we do that, and then we print out A again, the entirety of A, and we should see uh, 1 cat nil. All right, we just changed 2 to be nil. All right. So, moving a little <laughs> down the road here, let's say we want to make an array of strings. Be cats, dog, and elk. All right, good times. We want, uh, we want to look at, just to further enforce this, we'll print out the first three, uh, we'll print out, print out a couple of these things, just to see what we've got here. And so we do that, and we run it, and we get ant and dog. Looks great. Uh, but that was kind of annoying to have to do this, so there's another way to deal with this. We want uh, making an array of strings. We can say a equals, and we say percent %w, and then in um, curly braces, we type in the things that we care about separated by spaces. And let's just print a just to see what it looks like. And we do that, and we see it's an array of strings, the exact same thing that we put in, in the first one. So moving for, uh, forward, we can then create a new array. Uh, we'll, this one will be of, uh, of numbers, 45, 3, 19, and 8. Um, we then create a second one, we'll call it B, and in there we'll put Sam, Max, 56, 98.9, 9, 3, 10, and Jill. So now there are a couple other things we can do. Uh, for example, if we want to combine two arrays together, we can use the um, and then uh, turn them into a string. Basically, we can say p and uh, we want to uh, join a and b, a plus b, right? That will um, the a plus b uh, will combine the uh, the two arrays together into one. And then if we want to turn this into a string, we can use the join operator. And then give it uh, whatever we want to separate the uh, the different um, values out with. All right. And so we do that, and what we should see is uh, the two arrays uh, printed out as a single string uh, with spaces in between. And that's exactly what we get. So that worked out pretty well. Um, now we can also. Um, <clears throat> index of the arrays with negative numbers. So unlike in Java or C, we can use a negative number, uh, which is very similar to Python actually. And if we want to, we can, uh, let's say we want a the second index of A, we want the fourth index of B, and maybe uh, the two from the, uh, the end index on B as well. So we can do that by saying B, negative two, right? So negative one would be Jill, right? The end index and uh, 10 would be the negative two index, right? So when we use negative numbers, we index starting at the end and moving backwards. When we start with zero, we start from the front and move forward. Anyway, so if we do this, we should see um, what uh, 19, uh, four would be three and 10. And that's what we get. 
So that worked out pretty well. Um, now we can also go ahead and, and uh, sort things. So let's go ahead and call a.sort. And then we'll join that uh, sorted array with um, the space again. So we do that and we get exactly what we want, a sorted array. Now, as I said before, if we try to run uh, sort on um, one that has uh, un comparable items like strings and numbers, it will give us issues. So if we call b.sort.join, it will give us an error. As expected, we can't sort comparison of string with 56, right? It was trying to do the comparison, so the first things it saw was Sam and Max, so it, it had the ability to do uh, the comparison on those two items, and so it was trying to sort them, but then it hit a number and it didn't know how to sort that. So uh, that, that was a failure. Um, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, another way we can actually build up a list or uh, an array will, is with the shift operator. So we can take A and we can shift into it 57 and then 9 and then uh, fill. And if we print A uh, dot join the space, we should see um, 9 and fill got added to it. Now the interesting thing is, note that when we called sort up above, right, we uh, it sorted the array and then joined it, but it actually what it was doing is it sorted A and then returned a new array. So you can, I believe, sort, so if we, uh, um, well, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll, we'll do that in a second here. If we, <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll call a method called pop, so we say a.pop. And that will remove the last item, so fill is unsortable. And so if we say uh, a dot sort, and then with a parenth with an exclamation point dot join, what we should see is uh, we'll print that, and then we will also print a again, just to see what happened. So we run that, and we see that uh, we we removed fill. Uh, that was uh, what the pop did. And then <clears throat> we uh, sorted the array, and then we printed the array again just to validate. And lo and behold, it is, um, as we expected, now uh, changed. So we changed it. Now I'll add fill back in just uh, so we can do this, some stuff. So a fill. And then uh, we can do all sorts of things with this. Um, pop, as we just saw, pop removes the last item from the end of the array. And then we can shift right if we call shift um, for example a dot shift so we say p a dot shift that removes the um the front item so we run this a dot shift remove three right that's what we printed um and then we can also call uh the other way we can delete things is by giving it an actual index so we can say a uh, let's say a dot delete fill or sorry we'll give it the uh, you can give it the actual value or we can say a dot delete um, delete, um, we'll say four, and we'll print both of these. So that actually returns, uh, I believe, nothing. Yeah, so uh, when we actually call the item uh, with the item, it returns um, uh, the thing that we care about that we're trying to delete. If we call delete with an index, it just removes the item. <clears throat> and so if we look at a, a right now, we say P A, we should see that it is missing a few items, uh, specifically three, and then uh, I believe we're missing, um, oh, if we remove fill. So do we actually remove anything? Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, should have removed something, but oh, sorry, uh, it didn't have four, uh, that was my bad, it's delete at, there there we are, now we run it, it should remove 57, all right, very good. Okay, that, that's the correct uh, syntax, delete at. Okay, very good. All right, now, um, so those are arrays. They're pretty easy to work with. There's a lot more operations you can do with them than what I'm showing here, of course. Um, the next uh, major data type is called a hash. Uh, we also know it as a map from Java or a dictionary from um, Perl, and I think uh, they call that data structure a dictionary in C Sharp. So anyway, uh, yeah, six rb. No, oh, sorry, seven rb. And a hash is just a. Uh, oh, and they call it an associative array in uh, uh, various other languages. So hashes are uh, awesome and easy to work with. 
Um, oh, I do want to go back to actually EX6 and talk about how we actually can create an array. So the last few things, so we, we, we saw that we can easily create an array by giving it items. We can shift things into it uh, and manipulate it that way. But uh, there's easier uh, ways of doing this. You can create an empty array by saying, uh, for example, A equals the empty array. Uh, A equals array.new with no nothing inside of it. Um, or, and then, of course, you can give it any value. So these are the main two ways of creating a new array. Um, Similarly, if we want to create a hash, we can say a equals um, the uh, empty uh, curly braces. Uh, we can say a equals hash dot new with nothing in it. And if we want to give it a default value for uh, anything that we don't, we can't find. So if we give it a key that we are is unknown, we can say hash dot new, and then we give it a default value, for example, zero. But anyway. Um, we'll start with Z as our main thing we want to work with. When we do, when we actually know the values, we can start by using uh, keys. And so there are two different ways we can do keys. Typically, we want to use uh, a unique value like a string. So, for example, Mike, and uh, we say seventy-five, and maybe Bill, and that's eighteen, and Alice. So what we see here is that we're creating, um, and we'll say her value is thirty-two. Um, <clears throat> so it's some key and some value, and they're separated by the rocket operator equals greater than. And then uh, each one of these uh, individual key value pairs is separated by commas. And so it's very similar to how we create an array. Uh, we can also um, create another one. We'll use the same values, but instead we'll use Mike. And so the, if we before, if we put a colon and then a, a, a word, that's called a... Um, Call a symbol, and uh, we'll say 75, and Bill is 18, and Alice equal is 32. So symbols are a special type of data structure inside of our data type inside of um, uh, inside Ruby. And so I'm going to run that really quick. IRB, and if I say Mike dot class says symbol, right? And the interesting thing about this is they cannot be changed. They're always the same uh, regardless, and so they're always unique as well. And so <coughs> a lot of things are symbols inside of Ruby. It's kind of an underlying data structure that uh, holds everything or, or data type that holds everything. But anyway, um, if we want to access, for example, um, uh, value inside of this, we can just give it this key. For example, Z um, uh, Mike, right? So we print that out. If we run this. And we uh, as uh, Ruby ex seven to RB, we see seventy five. <clears throat> now on the other hand, if we say P Z uh, Joe, right? That will get uh, doesn't exist, right? So it gives us nil. And if we went back up here, and um, we want to adjust that, so we say maybe we say Joe is equal to um, forty four. And now we can assign that value. We can also do this for y, and we say Joe equals 44. And then if we want to print out, um, uh, let's say z at Joe and and also y and the symbol Joe, uh, we can see what we get, and we expect them to both be 44. So we see 44 and 44. All right. Now we can also <clears throat> let's say we create uh, we can also test whether something has a key, right? So if we want to, we can say p does um, z dot ha oh, sorry, I need to put that uh, z dot has key question mark. So if you're looking through the API documentation and you happen to see any methods that have a question mark, we already uh, in, it's a Ruby convention that um, any type of uh, boolean method always end or boolean function always has the question mark at the end of its name. So that's just for clarification. Z dot has key uh, Mike, and that should return true. So we'll go ahead and then uh, maybe we'll add one more in there. Um, Z dot has uh, key, and we'll say Jones, right? Just to run that. Um, <clears throat> And we see true and then false. Uh, a further mention is that I believe we can uh, convert, uh, for example, um, say Mike dot, or we can actually take the symbol um, 
uh, I'll run that. It would be a little easier to do in the IRB. So we can say uh, Mike is a symbol, right? So we have Mike dot two s. We'll convert it to a, a string representation. That is Mike, and we can call we can take Mike the string and say dot two sim, which converts it to the symbol Mike. So we can uh, do all sorts of these things. We can also convert to an array. We can say Mike dot two a will convert it to an array and that failed because I don't believe there's a two array conversion for that um, but uh, anyway there's also a 2f a 2c a 2r uh, and this actually gave us the all the different uh, possibilities that we could use um, not everything has a 2a uh, but anyway moving forward um, uh, control D clear uh, we can also go and uh, I was uh, alluding to the fact that we can use um, create a new hash for his, uh, with a, a default value. So let's create a histogram hash, and then we'll give it a default value of zero. Okay. And so if we say p uh, histogram key one, right? Print it out. It, we have never put anything in this hash in this, uh, so it should give us zero, right? So then if we adjust this, we say uh, p histogram ah, key one equals histogram key one plus one. We could also have used plus equals. We'll do that one as well. So what we'll see here is that it is that it'll give us a, a zero, one, and two, as expected.